Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless i was sharing with you before we started the interview about raven simone actress yeah. raven simone who grew up on the cosby show as little raven she was so adorable she yes. went on to be uh, raven that's so raven on her show and she was a psychic i mean she's come out and saying that she actually has a spirit guide that she has psychic powers talk about that wow well, I remember her because that, that's the age that I grew up in, the Cosby show. Um, unfortunately, even with her playing that role, she opened herself up to those familiar spirits. And so what these familiar spirits have done to this young lady, Raven, is they have um, guised themselves as something good in her life. And so they are very familiar with what she will um, listen to. They watch her, they study. Familiar spirits are very familiar with personalities in your family. They're familiar with um, different mannerisms someone will have. So they can literally come to her and she will think, oh, this is exactly what my great grandmother would have said, or this is exactly what you know my uncle or my whatever uh, would have done. They would have done it like this. People actually can smell sometimes the scent of the ancestor when the ancestor comes into the room, they'll say, oh, it smells like, you know, a perfume that they wore. And so what's happened with her is I believe because of all of those shows where she's opened herself up to pretending to be a psychic and have these powers is that now there's an actual demon that is following her around and she's actually being guided by this demon. I'm actually praying for her because I pray that maybe she'll even see this and know that that spirit that is speaking with her, Raven, if you're watching this, that spirit that is speaking with you and guiding you, it is a false spirit. It is not a God. It is a demon and it is leading you down a horrible path. And I believe God wants to set you free. You need to repent and you need to tell that spirit to get out in Jesus. First Timothy 4.1. Now the spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. The Bible expressly condemns all forms of witchcraft, as we read in Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. God takes witchcraft very seriously. And the penalty for practicing witchcraft under Old Testament law was death, as we read in Exodus 22.18 and Leviticus 20.27. 20, you shall not permit a sorceress to live. A man also, or woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them. The New Testament condemns witchcraft as well. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Witchcraft is Satan's realm, and he excels in counterfeiting what God does. When Moses performed miracles before Pharaoh, the magicians did the same things through demonic power as we read in Exodus 7, 8-11. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so, just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. 
any practice that dabbles in a power source other than the Lord Jesus Christ is witchcraft. Revelation 21.8 includes witches in a list of those who will burn in the lake of fire. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Christians must renounce any involvement with witchcraft, following the example of the early believers in Acts 19:19 19, 19 through 20. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. So Jen, Raven Simone from That's So Raven, she's a, a child star who was on The View. She's done quite a bit in, in media and entertainment. She came out with some really interesting comments talking about real life psychic moments that she has experienced. And I want to just start with getting your reaction. You've read the comments, you've seen, and we'll unpack a little bit of what she said, what she had to say. But what were you thinking when you saw this? To be honest with you, my daughter used to watch her show. So the first thing I thought to my mind that came to my mind was we have somebody who brings a lot of nostalgia to the 22 year olds, the younger people um, who, of course, is attached to Disney. And now she's um, talking all about the paranormal. I mean, this is reaching the youth. They're thinking, hey, you know, um, I used to love her on that. So Raven and she was psychic in that show. She had these psychic moments. And this is cool. So uh, this is a huge problem for me, Billy, and a huge problem for the youth who have that nostalgic feeling towards her because the things that she's talking about are demonic. I'm going to read a quote. Humans have the ability in their brain to tap into energy fields that allow for truth to connect when you know how to translate it correctly. Let's just start with that line. Now, in case people don't know, you are a former psychic medium. Before you became a believer, you were a psychic for years. This was your job and your life. When you hear a line like that, what do you think? I actually noted that quote myself. And um, it's interesting to me that that's a baby God uh, idea, right? That you have this power, that we all have this power. And as long as you use it correctly or you translate it correctly, um, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. That's not at all what is happening. First of all, Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We cannot, um, we cannot come up with these things and say that we are the truth tellers here. It's Jesus Christ, right? But here's what's actually happening. Information is being downloaded by demons when you are getting psychic information. So um, what she's talking about is psychic information that a lot of people have had, like myself, I was doing it for years, and it's literally demons feeding you this information, and they can do that because they've been around for ages. And we know that um, they know things about you. This has nothing to do with you yourself. What Raven did was she gave permission at some point in time to demons to access this information. This is not built into us. This is not a gift from God. And we weren't born as psychics. She goes on in this quote. She says, I can walk into a room and read the room. People might not think that's psychic, but what that is, is reading energy. And energy is in the psychic plane because it's not on a physical material plane. And that's what you're speaking about there, right? When, when this idea of energy, this thing that is out there that can be harnessed and you can, I think that term baby God that you use is really interesting. She also said, and I'll just throw this out there before you respond. I do have moments where I really will just stare and I will see a scene that is happening that has happened to me or is going to happen to me in another dimension. And I feel it in my body, but I really will just <laughs> stare and stare. I will see a scene that is happening that has happened to me or going to happen in another dimension and I feel it in my body. It's supernatural, so above the physical plane, above the laws of nature. And we know that only is from God or the devil. And we know that God is clear not to practice or consult psychics, fortune tellers, interpreting omens. So any of these signs, like she's trying to interpret these things as signs and wonders, you're not supposed to be doing that. So we know that's not coming from God. And this is the danger because then she's sucking other people into this demonic, um, this demonic practice and they're believing it and they want to believe it. Because again, for me, like I said in the beginning, this goes back to, hey, she's 
so cool. We used to watch her. There's a nostalgic feeling with her. There are people right now who are watching this or listening to it, and maybe they've toyed around with these things. Maybe they're super into horoscopes or they're, you know, they're engaged in these different elements of trying to find power somewhere other than God based on your experience, your life, where you've come from, where you are now. What would be your plea to those people? I would say, please, please, please stop going to creation for your peace, for your answers, for your happiness. Um, those are created things. The stars are a creation. Tarot cards are cardboard. Um, even the medium is a created being, a woman, a man. Okay, we need to go to God. Those created things have no real knowledge about you. The information that you get, you are getting information. It's coming from demons. And the Lord is the only one who can provide for you the things that the devil is promising, but can never fulfill. The Lord is the only one who can give you the peace, give you knowledge, wisdom, and joy. Stop chasing happiness. Get off the hamster wheel because you can have joy um, regardless of your circumstances through Jesus Christ. What does the Bible say about demons? Demons are fallen angels, as we read in Revelation 12:9. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. When Satan fell, he took one third of the angels with him, as we read in Revelation 12:4. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Demons are fallen angels who along with Satan chose to rebel against God. Some of the demons are already locked in darkness, bound with everlasting chains, as we read in Jude 1.6. And the angels, who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Other demons are free to roam the earth, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Demons, as spirit beings, have the ability to take possession of a physical body. Can a Christian be demon-possessed? Romans 8, 9-11 But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Surely the Holy Spirit would not allow a demon to possess the same person he is indwelling. It is unthinkable that God would allow one of his children whom he purchased with the blood of Christ and made into a new creation to be possessed and controlled by a demon. Nevertheless, we are to put on the whole armor of God as we read in Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. When Jesus Christ traveled through ancient Israel 2,000 years ago, he frequently cast evil spirits out of people he encountered, as we read in Mark 5, 1-9. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. 
For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Jesus, during his earthly ministry, encountered many demons, and he drove out the spirits with the word, as we read in Matthew 8.16. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word, and healed all who were sick. Satan and his demons now look to destroy the work of God and deceive anyone they can, as we read in 1 Peter 5.8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The demons are described as evil spirits, unclean spirits, flying spirits, and angels of Satan. Satan and his demons deceive the world, promote false doctrine, attack Christians, and combat the holy angels. The fallen angels are enemies of God, but they are defeated enemies. Christ has disarmed the powers and authorities, and he has made a public spectacle of them, as we read in Colossians 2.15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. As we get closer to Jesus' return, the world will grow more evil, and demon possession will increase. But take heart, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21.11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Health officials in Georgia are sounding the alarm after a rare death from what is known as the brain-eating amoeba. The unidentified victim is believed to have become infected while swimming in a freshwater lake or pond. A Las Vegas toddler died from the amoeba earlier this month. Swimmers are urged to prevent warm fresh water from going up their nose. The CDC says the number of leprosy cases in the southeastern U.S. has doubled in the last decade. And most of those cases are actually found in Florida. The disease is caused by bacteria and can lead to severe disfiguring uh, skin sores and nerve damage. Um, when you think of leprosy, you think of sort of a biblical age illness, not a modern day Florida illness. Why is Florida now a hot spot for leprosy? No one totally knows the answer as to why Florida has become a hot spot. But what we do know is there are actually several states of the United States and Puerto Rico where we uh, see cases of leprosy every year. But as you mentioned in your piece, it's gone up in, in Florida and we are seeing uh, more consistency in having cases that are acquired here in Florida. Really quickly, when you think leprosy, you think worst case scenario. I mean, people losing limbs. But the reality is there are really effective treatments. Yes, but you have to catch it early mm -hmm. because the, the, there, there's very effective treatment. We have to diagnose the type of leprosy you have to give you the appropriate treatment. Treatment for one type of leprosy will last a year, for the other will last two years at least. Um, but even if you're completely treated for and remove the bacterium from your body, symptoms can progress if it wasn't caught early because it sets in motion a type of immunologic response that can be very damaging. So it's really important to get diagnosed promptly. Psalm 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Now to that massive wildfire scorching California in the desert there and now spilling into Nevada, fueled in part by record heat with little relief in sight. Miguel Almaguer has the latest. 
Facing an out-of-control blaze in extreme conditions, tonight this is the dangerous firefight for crews in California's Mojave Desert. Remote but exploding in size, the York Fire has torn across 80,000 acres, the largest in the country so far this year, now spilling into Nevada. We were pretty concerned that it could start coming down at us. As the unusual desert blaze destroys protected Joshua trees and threatens endangered animals. Just heartbreaking. The erratic conditions here have created fire nados, a vortex of swirling flames and smoke. Baking in triple digits, firefighters are battling an inferno while working inside an oven. It gets really bad. It's hard to breathe. If the heat wasn't enough, smoke is drifting across two states, smothering parts of Las Vegas, where a thick haze triggered flight delays and is impacting air quality. Yeah, it's humid. It's hot. For some 43 million today under heat alerts, the conditions outside are stifling. In July, Phoenix averaged nearly 103 degrees, the warmest temp for any U.S. city in any year. And across the West, the start of fire season was delayed because of our wet winter, but now conditions are prime for disaster. Fast moving wildfires in Canada and the US have led to residents being evacuated from their homes. In California, extreme heat and turbulent winds are creating dangerous conditions for firefighters. Furious flames scorching the earth, spewing thick, toxic smoke, creating an apocalyptic like landscape along the US Canada border in Washington. You could actually feel the heat from it, you know, across the lake. And we also could hear the roar from the fire at, at one point, too as it would hit the bigger clumps of trees. The raging flames of the Eagle Bluff fire threatening properties and triggering evacuations. The first priority is always human life and safety. It's impressive, it's scary, but it's it's fascinating to watch how fast it moves and then how you'll be watching it. And then about 100 meters ahead, uh, a spark will happen and another tree will go up and then the, the, the main bulk of the fire catches up to that. And it was moving so fast north. It's a similar situation on the California-Nevada border. There's a haze. Nothing you can't see ahead. I mean, you can't see the mountain. With people fleeing the flames of the York fire. We've got all of our animals that we could take with us. Some of them we had to turn loose, the cattle, you know, and the sheep. Forceful winds are fueling the fires. The extreme weather creating extremely dangerous conditions, spawning a vortex of flames and smoke. People's lives are, in, you know, at stake. The people fighting the fires. It's a hazard. Fire and wind is not made. Parts of Beijing are submerged after storms brought by Typhoon Doksuri pummeled the Chinese capital for four days. The average rainfall for the month of July fell here in just 40 hours, triggering flash floods and landslides. Evacuation orders were issued for more than 50,000 people. Cleanup operations are underway in the worst hit areas of Montogo and Fangshan. Several vehicles were swept away as roads were turned into rivers. The flood was scary. Many cars were washed away, even people were washed away. There's nothing you can do about a natural disaster. I have never seen such heavy rain in my life, maybe just a few times. But this time, the rain lasted for so long. Authorities have deployed military helicopters to deliver supplies to stranded train passengers. Three trains were trapped on their routes and many roads were blocked. Thousands of households have been left without running water. Emergency teams have been dispatched to deliver food and other supplies. Rivers swell to dangerous levels, prompting use of the flood storage reservoir for the first time in 25 years. Several subway lines have been suspended. It's rare for a typhoon to hit inland Beijing, and only the second time in recent history that a red alert was issued for storms. The deluge followed weeks of record high temperatures, extreme weather that scientists attribute to climate change. Typhoon Doksuri swept through the southern province of Fujian on the weekend, affecting more than 2 million people and causing damage worth more than $2 billion. 18,000 homes have been destroyed. China is now preparing for another typhoon, Kunun, which is approaching the east coast. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past, 
and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16, 21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Now to the latest on the war in Ukraine. This morning, a Russian drone strike on a port in southern Ukraine damaged vital facilities used to export grain. And Ukraine says more than 10 Russian drones targeted Kyiv. Now, this comes the day after drones struck a skyscraper in Moscow for the second time in 48 hours. Ramy Innocencio joins us now from Ukraine. Every day for the past four days, it has been back and forth drone strikes between Russia and Ukraine. And before dawn this morning, it was Ukraine's capital in the crosshairs again. As many as 10 Russian drones targeted Kyiv. The mayor said anti-aircraft units took them all out, but debris did fall over several districts. The facades of several buildings took damage. The mayor said, thankfully, no one was killed or wounded. Also overnight, Russian drones launched from the Sea of Azov targeted the port of Ismail. That's on the river. River Danube as Russia continues to hit Ukraine's ports. Ukraine's military said those drones were all taken down, but the strike did damage a grain silo and nearby buildings. And these come after attacks across Ukraine yesterday. Four Russian drones hit a college in Kharkiv in the northeast, and Russian shelling blew the roof off a hospital in Kherson in the southeast. That killed a doctor on his first day at work and wounded five other colleagues. And what this shows is Russia answering Ukraine's attempt to take the war to Russian soil, as President Zelensky pledged on Sunday. It is clear Russia's attacks are much deadlier, causing more damage, injuries, and death. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting, as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine, and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms, and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven-year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him, and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. It's just so disturbing. That reaction from neighbors at the Hillsdale Garden Apartments in San Mateo comes after finding out one of their neighbors was stabbed to death inside an apartment Wednesday. It was really chilling, to be honest. It was really chilling. It was kind of frightening because, you know, if you think about it, like 24 hours ago, this woman was alive. She had a life. She had friends. She had family. And then now it she's gone. Police say 39-year-old Mark Mitchkoff seen in these Facebook photos is responsible for the stabbing and they say he recorded the final moments of the woman's life then posted the murder on Facebook. 
That post was seen by someone in Nevada who knows Mitchkoff and told police they had witnessed a stabbing. Investigators say they tracked Mitchkoff to San Jose where they found him in a car and arrested him still in possession of the suspected murder weapon. Mitchkoff knew the victim but police say it's unclear what their relationship was and an apparent motive. NBC Bay Area has learned he has a past criminal history including a Florida arrest in 2019 for allegedly punching a woman and threatening to kill her with a knife. It's pretty, pretty hideous what, what that video contained. Um, I mean, not only was there a victim that ultimately lost her life, which is just bad enough, but then to take it a step farther and actually post a video about it is, is pretty disturbing. In the third day of her trial, Taylor Shabiznis has been convicted of killing and dismembering Shad Therian inside a Green Bay home. A jury found Shabiznis guilty of first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and third-degree sexual assault. The jury reached the verdict in a little more than a half hour. During closing arguments, the prosecution argued the case was crystal clear. This is bizarre. This is strange. This is unnatural. But it is in no way unclear. We know exactly what happened. We know exactly what Taylor intended to happen for all three of these offenses. During testimony Wednesday, a recording of Shabiznis' interrogation was shown to the jury. In the video, Shabiznis admitted to police that she strangled Chad Therian and did other gruesome things to him. A Green Bay police detective who interviewed Shabiznis testified once Shabiznis started strangling Therian, Shabiznis told him that she enjoyed it and continued strangling him. The detective said that the business used knives from the kitchen to carry out the gruesome crime. According to the criminal complaint, the victim's head was found in a bucket. One of the many signs we are living in the last days is people would be brutal, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Hundreds of migrants violently tried to bust into the once luxurious Roosevelt Hotel. Now the NYPD had to be called as the poor people who were working hotel security could not handle what amounted to be a not so small migrant riot. As of this morning, hundreds were still camped outside. Throughout the weekend, dozens of migrants were told there was no space inside, and many waited in a line that wrapped around a city block. Others slept outside. Since last spring, more than 93,000 migrants or asylum seekers have arrived here to New York City. Some have been bused to other locations, but there are still more than 56,000 in the city's care. Now, this is what Democrats have always wanted, though, isn't it? an open border that would help usher in a new America. And this is what we're getting. Millions upon millions of illegals who fanned out across America with their free cell phones and dubious intentions. They want benefits, and they're hurting those already struggling, people struggling the most, like minorities in Chicago. The community continues to, continues to feel inundated with trash, loitering, drugs, parking, noise, and most recently, these aggressive violent acts. They drink, they deal drugs, yeah. there's prostitution, yeah. there's something, there are, the seniors are afraid. They disrespect us, yeah. they rob us, yeah. they harass us. Yeah. They got one more time to deal with it, because otherwise, next time you deal with it, they're going to deal with it from the streets. I haven't been safe, but I was actually walking them to school, the migrants or whatever was saying something to him. He should be able to walk freely to and from school. Of course, if Democrat policies aren't littering urban America with illegal aliens, they're destroying it through their permissive policies toward crime. Just look at the once grand San Francisco. It's a sanctuary city, not just for illegals, but for deranged politicians as well, it turns out. City residents were incensed to learn that DA Brooke Jenkins decided not to charge two defendants behind the violent carjacking and crash you see here, even with the perpetrator caught on video. Well, Jenkins says more investigation is required to properly charge this case. What a place. 
Now, just miles away in Oakland, the violence has gotten so bad that the local chapter of the NAACP is demanding that city leaders declare crime a state of emergency. But surely, come on, things in our nation's capital has got to be better, right? Wrong. And here's where things stand. Compared with this time last year, homicide rates in D.C. are currently up 17 percent, carjackings up 117 percent, and violent crime overall is up 38 percent. In fact, the situation has gotten so dire in Washington, D.C., that the Mexican consulate there, yes, Mexican consulate, has issued a warning to their citizens. Attention, Mexican community. The city of Washington, D.C. is experiencing a significant increase in crime in areas previously considered safe. Take precautions. Now, liberals always hated the idea, didn't they, of American greatness. And America is number one. And we're getting a clear idea of what it all looks like. Because this is what it is. Third world America. One of the many signs that we're living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5-13. through Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised them from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. 
God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.